Hi, this is Jonathan Ross, Field Agronomist for Pioneer, and today I want to take a quick moment to talk with you about some of the exciting things that Pioneer has going on in the dairy space. You probably are well aware of our outstanding silage corns, BMRs, inoculants, alfalfas, and, and all the exciting things we have going on there, but did you know that there's a soybean that we sell as well that can actually help with uh, what goes in here? That's right, I'm talking about Plenish High Oleic Soybeans. So what exactly is Plenish? Plenish is a high oleic soybean. What does that mean? It means that Plenish soybeans have a higher oleic content than a traditional commodity soybean. Now what does this mean to dairies? One of the main things that we really focus on right now in the dairy market is components. Linoleic oils have been shown to actually be able to suppress our butter fat or milk fat whenever they are introduced into a low pH rumen environment. When we use a high oleic feed source, such as Plenish, in that same low pH environment, our butter fats or milk fat hold steady. Plenish has also been studied by two major universities, University of Wisconsin and Penn State University. Both of these studies found that when feeding lactating dairy animals Plenish high oleic soybeans, there was an increase in milk fat. You can find more on this by researching these yourself. Pioneer also looked into this with an on-farm study in Pennsylvania. This on-farm study also showed an increase in milk fat when feeding plenish high oleic soybeans. However, depending on the diet, different levels of response was noted. We all know in the dairy industry that feed is a humongous part of our profitability. Our cost to feed an animal plays right into the profitability of the dairy. A huge part of that also is soybeans and soybean meal. Maybe you think Plenish would be a fit for you. Well, don't just listen to myself. Why not check out someone who's already had success with it? Uh, I'm Neil King. And Colton King. Milk about 130 cows, Holstein, here in Chester County. We saw the fat response, uh, it went from a 3.8 to a 4.2, and uh, the protein went from a 2.95 to a 3.31, to a so uh, we really liked what we saw there. And we, we increased the uh, pounds fed per head per day from 4 to 6 pounds, okay. so we did all that at the same time. We, we harvested them there in November, and that's when we started feeding them. And uh, that's when we got the response we did uh, right away. Within, within a week after we started feeding them, uh, we, we saw the response. Oh, yeah, definitely. The butter fat and protein went up, and that, of course, helps the, the, pod, well, the profit end of the, the deal. So. Yeah. As long as we can keep that high, we can turn a better profit and uh, yeah, keep our feed costs down. Yeah. So it's definitely a benefit. I was concerned with uh, yield drag. I didn't want to see a yield drag. All mine that I planted last year were after wheat. And uh, we had them uh, beans planted by the 1st of July. And they made 60 bushel. So. I don't think we had much of a yield drag there, so I'm going to plant them again this year. We, we got what we were looking for as far as uh, we were looking to get our components up, and, and it worked. So um, yeah, as long as our Pioneer deer stands behind, stands behind <laughs> us, we'll be in good shape. There you go. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you found this informative and helpful. If you need any additional information, please reach out to your local Pioneer sales representative. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.